welcome again to another program of Searching for Answers. My name is Carolyn Thompson, and we're still in the book of Luke. And uh, we're finding it very interesting, and I have some very distinguished people with us tonight, and they're going to help us sort everything out. So do stand by. Don't forget to get your different versions of the Bible, even a dictionary, a Bible dictionary, maybe a map of the region might not be too bad, right, John? And on my right is... John Jones, the School of Religion at La Sierra University. My left? John Brunt, the Azure Hills Church. Ivan Blazin, and remember, Ivan equals John, so there's first, second, and third, third John, John here tonight. <laughs> Ivan Blazin of Loma Linda University. All right. We hope by now that you have found your different versions of the Bible. And please turn to the book of Luke, chapter 11, and John Jones is going to give us a little review of what we've been studying the well, past few weeks. It has to do with prayer. Those of you with your Bibles open before you will notice that the opening paragraph in Luke chapter 11 is uh, that famous uh, moment in Jesus' life when the disciples came and said, Lord, just, just teach us how to pray. That's right. Isn't that interesting? Uh -huh. um, we sometimes wish our students would ask us questions like that mm -hmm. instead of the technical <laughs> ones they sometimes do. So uh, this appears uh, also in Matthew, but here Jesus simply says, Our Father, yeah, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. There is an expression of the wish that the divine plan for restoration of the world and of the human uh, race may be hastened in some way. And uh, then the one material request in the entire prayer, give us this day our daily bread. But even that is a humble request, isn't it? It is a request that simply says, our daily bread, it's daily, not weekly or monthly, mm -hmm. it's daily bread, and it is for this day, please give us what we need today. It reminds us, doesn't it, of that experience in the desert when uh, the Israelite people were dependent on God for their daily ration of manna and sustenance. So here it is, and then the prayer goes on, uh, forgive us our sins, or our debts, or our trespasses, as you wish to translate it, for we ourselves also forgive everyone who sins against us or who is indebted to us. You know? And lead us not into temptation, or uh, lead us not into trial, uh, as we may take it. And in the Lucan version, that much at least is the minimal text. We have some other familiar phrases interwoven through this passage that are probably more belonging to Matthew, but there has been a tendency over the centuries to kind of expand the text. But here at least in bare bones form mm -hmm. is the Lucan version of it. Now, picking up on this, there is so much, and it is so rich, that we could spend time unpacking. But for the moment, we notice that the next couple paragraphs mm -hmm. go right ahead with asking <coughs> for bread. A couple of illustrations of what's involved in that. So here we go with the bread illustrations after this mm -hmm. little prayer. Yeah. Um, can we still make comments on the you Lord's may. Prayer? Mm -hmm. You may. Um, when I was going to say something myself because I have a little footnote here. Well, go ahead. Some manuscripts say, yeah. Our Father in Heaven. Some <laughs> manuscripts come, May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Greek, Everyone who is indebted to us. Some manuscripts, Temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Yeah. So what, notice all of those phrases are from Matthew's version of the Lord's Prayer. Oh, okay. Right. And what you have is scribes, when they were copying, they knew what they had copied in Matthew, and when they got to Luke and it was shorter, their tendency was to add it in. Oh. And so the early scribes, when, of course, remember that before the printing press, every manuscript had to be hand copied, and so people copy every copy of the Bible that anybody had was hand copied. And when the scribes did this copying, they tended to harmonize the different Gospels. Okay. And so 
if it was longer in Matthew and shorter in Luke, their tendency was to add from Matthew into Luke. So I think most of those are later manuscripts. They're not the earliest manuscripts of Luke right. and are probably added by scribes on the basis of Matthew. Yeah. But probably Luke's version was <coughs> just the shorter version yes. originally. Ivan. Well, I'm kind of interested in this uh, phrase. Give us each day or today our daily bread. Uh, because some manuscripts will say, <laughs> again, give us today our bread for tomorrow. Mm. And, oh, and really? Now, yeah, give us today, uh, instead of our daily bread, our bread uh, for tomorrow. And the point is, that makes some sense in this prayer because what we are praying for is the coming of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it could well be that when we ask for this bread, we're asking for something in the now that is the gift of the future, you might say. The kingdom is coming, but right now give us some of the resources, some of the nurture and, uh, you know, feed us with the, you know, Jews had an idea of a big banquet, a messianic banquet. There's going to be a big banquet. Jesus refers to a banquet at the end. Mm -hmm. And right now, let us have some of the bread right now from the big banquet we're going to have later. Mm -hmm. oh. So it would be holding together kind of present and future. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a, a very interesting idea. And of course, as has already been mentioned here, then um, the parables that start in, you know, the, the first one that we're going to have in just any moment is, is about this very thing, you see. So anyway, uh, the bread <laughs> motif is now kind of important. But mm -hmm. Ivan, I'm I'm a little surprised at the shortness of Jesus' prayer. Yeah, well. How do you, how do you square that with modern day prayers, well, in church? Some of them aren't that short. Well, maybe Jesus here is trying to tell us something. <laughs> he anticipates our long prayers. Even Matthew says, has been pointed out, is a little bit longer than Luke's. Yeah. And it is rounded out if I may use the word liturgically, That's right. by for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. Yes. And reflects the usage of this prayer, which when Jesus said in Matthew, pray like this, well, we began to pray specifically this, this and then yeah. we added this ending, thine is kingdom power, all of which comes from the Old Testament, right. so it is word of God. But uh, we get a liturgical prayer and, and Luke preserves for us the, the shorter version of this what prayer. What is liturgical? having to do with church and the, the way okay. the service is conducted, okay. you know, yes. and, and so on. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And isn't it interesting that in all of this, uh, Jesus is terse because, first of all, I think he's a good teacher. And in that oral tradition mm -hmm. where people didn't really write stuff down at the time, there probably was no one, not even Matthew necessarily, getting it all down. Good teachers knew how to put pithy things in the minds of their disciples. That's right. Furthermore, also in Matthew, uh, there is that strong warning, isn't there, mm -hmm. against multiplying words in your prayers. That's right. Don't get, don't get wordy, don't get repetitious. Say it. Mm -hmm. Say it. Just mm -hmm. say it. You know? Well, maybe God is trying to say, now don't speak at length, I yeah. know, but I get tired of these long prayers. <laughs> I really suggest a shorter prayer here yeah. for yes. my ears. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that implied in yeah. the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus says, your heavenly Father knows that you need yeah. food. <laughs> he knows that you need clothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Isn't that kind of a hint there about uh, sure. laboring the matter? And yet we can buy books today, popular books in the bookstore. If you pray this prayer a couple dozen times a day, uh, I'll go ahead and say it. The prayer of Jabez, for example. Yes. You, yes. Um, mm -hmm. you know, just pray this little mantra over and over and over again, then you will receive the magical blessings. Yeah, we need to remember the but real But don't you think Jesus got tired of hearing that over and over and over? I can only suppose so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think the question is, is where it's coming from. That's right. I don't think Jesus ever gets tired of sincere communication. Right, right. But... Well, he gets tired of our noisy hymns <laughs> in the Old Testament <laughs> yeah. where some of those people weren't really sincere. And he says, you know, I, I'm just tired of that. Just be faithful and do what I command. I'm sick of 
it, it, listening to your noisy hymns. <laughs> yeah, Do you know what I'm talking about, living, Ivan? They weren't yes. living. They weren't living it. They right. were just going through kind of a ritual. Mm -hmm. Well, I've heard Jews, uh, though, support this idea. Uh, there was uh, one uh, Jewish man, a journalist at the New York Times, yeah. and he went to Harvard, and you know, he wrote a book about uh, his experience mm -hmm. at Harvard, and mm -hmm. he said, you know, one of the differences is we, we Jews believe in having a prayer going up all the time, so uh, we may, it may sound rote, but we think that's good because the prayer is always ascending in a rote manner, so I you hear an argument even for that. But I remember, <laughs> I've said this before, but if you don't mind me repeating it, my daughter's saying, why do they pray in front of every class, you know, in a parochial school? Why not not give God some time off, you know? <laughs> well, there's ten minutes between each class. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's it. But the shortness of this prayer is very meaningful. But look how packed it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's when you right. look at there's the content of this prayer, Father, I mean God, like the conception of who God is. That's already something new. Yeah, this Abba, is, yeah, isn't it? this is incredible. And, and you know, uh, hallowed be your name or sanctify your name. And we mentioned one time that perhaps this means, as in Ezekiel, God, do something to, to uh, show your name for the greatness that it has. Not yes. that we are sanctifying God's name, but He is sanctifying it before us and vindicating Himself, you know, and so on. And, and so you get this whole notion of sanctification of, of God and, and of humans, you know, and then, of course, our daily bread with all that suggests and forgiveness and how we are to forgive and don't bring us into time of affliction and trial. I mean, there's so much in this prayer. You're praying a lot in That's short. Right. That's right. And when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration, he was, he was prostrate on the prostrate on the stony ground. Mm -hmm. And he was pouring his heart out to his father, saying, you know, he had just asked the disciples, who do you think I am? And they said, the Messiah. Then he said to the people, who do the people say I am? So Jesus was pouring his heart out to God. Now, I don't think that was a two minute prayer. May well not have it been. It may not have been, and we, got, we understand that sort of thing. You know, there are traditions within the Christian heritage that I think capitalize on this kind of prayer in all of its kind of pregnancy, its fullness and potential for meaning. Mm -hmm. They're called bidding prayers. You don't have to multiply words, but there is value in that format of saying something like, may your kingdom come. Yeah and then rest a moment in silence. Mm. Give people a chance to reflect on what that means. That's very good. May your will be done on earth as it uh -huh. is in heaven. Silence. We need to pray that way. It's a tradition that is strong in the pacifist and the quietist traditions of, uh, of the Quakers, for example, Church of the Brethren. They do that. We could learn something, couldn't we? I think we could. And I think there's something at the, that last phrase. This is very interesting, that last phrase. Do not bring us, as, a, as my particular version says, to the time of trial. Yeah. Yeah. Not temptation like uh, to sin or something, but <coughs> Lord, it looks pretty bad. Yes. Can we be spared the troubles? And, and in this world right now, with all the mm -hmm. violence, that sounds good to me to pray that. And of course, Matthew adds, but deliver us from evil. So maybe if we have to face it, then at least don't let us get uh, lose our faith and go over to the side of evil or the side of the evil one yeah. mm. and so on. But it, I think this is meaningful. Well, Jesus said, let this cup pass from me. In a way, that's what we're saying here. That's right. Lord, let the mm -hmm. cup of yeah, what comes, you know, all these terrifying things, may we be spared that. You know, I think that's an okay prayer. Okay, shall we go on to verse 5? And John, uh, Brent, would you read that for us, sure. please? And go on down. Through this story. All yes. right, it's a story that begins right after this prayer in verse 5 of chapter 11. Then he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, Lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. 
Then the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door's already locked and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him the bread because he is a friend, yet because of the man's boldness he will get up and give him as much as he needs. <laughs> Mm. So, is so that says, that's an interesting story. Now, you it reads be, be, because of his boldness. Boldness is what uh, it says. My here. version says here reads persistence. persistence. Yeah. But boldness is in, in still presenting his petition. So it carries that idea, doesn't it? Yes. Well, I, I was looking at that this afternoon, and the verb form of this word means to be unabashed. Mm -hmm. And so forwardness or something. Yeah, yeah. it's a kind of. Boldness and persistence maybe are both in there. That being unabashed, just uh, here he you know, comes. He's yeah, not, not going to give up. That's right. And yeah, uh, it happens that the New American Standard has persistence also. Mm -hmm. But I, I do think that while that may be part of the picture, it's not. It doesn't exhaust it. I think you're right, mm -hmm. John. Um, this has to do something with uh, with the chutzpah involved, yeah, doesn't that's, it? Huh? That's a good word, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Yeah, uh, chutzpah. But isn't it amazing that uh, the friend isn't going to do it because he's a friend? Mm -hmm. And yet, this is a terribly important situation, isn't it? Which, given the hospitality, given the codes whole of hospitality yeah. ethos of this culture, if you have a someone come to your home yeah. and you don't take mm -hmm. care of them yeah. and you don't feed them and you don't give hospitality, this is one of the most shameful things yeah. that can happen to you. Well, that's, that's right, true, Andy, that's but didn't right. you think this person here was rather bold, banging on the door, mm -hmm. not giving up? Is that Jesus telling us we should be that way too? Exactly. Okay. Let us come boldly before the throne, throne of, of grace. grace. Hebrews yes, chapter 4, yes, last right. paragraph. You know? yes. yeah. Don't be shy toward God. Yes. But, mm -hmm. but you don't have to come again and again. What I mean to say is no, that's right. you can just come and you're sort of in there, mm -hmm. in the inner sanctum yeah. of God's yeah. sanctuary and love, you know? Yes. You can do that. But the, the question we have to ask here is, you know, what's the main point of this parable? Mm -hmm. what, what is the number one point? Yeah, what is it? Well, uh, when I read the word persistence or boldness, mm -hmm. I think that's sort of the point. But the question is, you see, we, we have to be careful not to allegorize this and like God doesn't yeah. want to, you yeah. know, God is that's troubled. I, yeah. This is a human that is trouble, and yeah. if you know how they're all sleeping together at night, the door is locked, it's a big job, yes. and the kids are down, everyone is sort of wrapped up together, you right. might say, right. and it's a real undertaking to yes. get up, actually disturb the children, wake them up, get this whole thing going, yes. to give some bread. Yeah. But he'll do it because he keeps on <coughs> doing it. So... I yeah. don't know that this story well, is understood so very the well without the, the next story. Yeah, we need the two together, don't we? This story and the next story yeah. together we'll kind of give, give a wholeness mm -hmm. to it. It helps to answer this, you know. Go but, ahead, but Ivan. certainly, just to, to stay on this just one for part. a second, it, yeah. the picture is not one of kind of cowering before God right. and being fearful yeah. of God. Um, yeah. Good point. There is this sense yeah. that we can come to God without fear. I mean, certainly humbly, but openly. And as you said in Hebrews, mm -hmm. come boldly. Yeah. Well, and isn't it another emphasis? And there will be an answer. I mean, there will be. This story mm -hmm. has an answer. Yeah. A need will be met. See? So, you I, know. I, I think mm -hmm. that's right. I, I think the point is exactly as we've said it. You know, that we Nonetheless, now, we need to temper it with the next story, lest we turn out to simply be reading this as a, a recipe for, um, forgive me, the prayer warriors who are, see themselves yes, as storming the gates of heaven and only getting God's answers to their prayers precisely because of their kind of holy persistence as if this had something to do with their action. That, I think, we need to also mm -hmm. caution ourselves against, yeah. don't we? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Isn't it interesting that we have these whole books on oh, yeah. how to be prayer warriors yeah. and so forth? The formulas. And yeah. all the formulas yeah. and so forth, and how different that is yeah. than Jesus' very simple response to their yeah. question. Exactly. Well, really, don't you see, and we can say more about this one, but don't you think then 
an interpretation of the meaning of all this is given in verse 9 on. Because mm -hmm. like it starts out in my Bible, I don't know what the first word in the English is. Uh, Greek, uh, you may check your Greek Bible that you brought tonight. Verse 9, yeah. Yeah, it says, so, yeah. mm -hmm. I tell you. There's a connecting link between yeah. the story that's coming and the story that was. And so this is kind of uh, an interpretation. So, it's I say to you. Cago, and also. Yeah, yeah, yeah and Cago. also. So, well, that that's even makes it better yeah. in the same way. So, mm -hmm. ask, and it will be given. Search. You know, there's that boldness, mm -hmm. and you will find, knock, and the door will be open. So the interpretation is one of generous giving yeah. Yeah. in response to this prayer. Exactly the opposite of the friend in the first story. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's a contrast. It's a contrast. Than a comparison in this case. The, exactly. And at the end of this particular new story, mm -hmm. we're get, that contrast will be furthered as we get there to that, because then we'll understand that there's a difference between God and this friend who finds it hard and difficult, mm -hmm. you know, to get up out of bed. Although yeah. we do understand in circumstances. I mean, this we is... We do. You yeah. get all those kids to sleep. I'll never forget the playing Christmas carols <laughs> in the city of Detroit in front of these mansions. And Edsel Ford, I think I said this sometime or other in the past, but Edsel Ford came running out. I had a brass quartet I had formed. <laughs> and he came running out of his house. He said, don't play. Don't play. I mean, we sound mm -hmm. good. You know, what do you mean, don't play? He said, it's been taking us all night to get our child, our daughter, to sleep. So don't play. Well, it's sort of like this story. I mean, I've got all these kids, these many kids, and we're all locked together, and, and they're right. sleeping blankets or whatever they use. And so, please, this is too much, but he does it anyhow. He's got to. It, it is a negative comparison in the first parable. There's a, the second one, we don't see any objection on God's part. God is not grudging. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to be won over. Rather, the comparison is with us. If you know how to give good gifts to your children, hey, just make the parallel. That's right. And you know what? The order of these stories is significant. Now, we recognize that what verse 9 says, ask and it'll be given search and knock and so on, that we have that, we know it more familiarly, familiarly, did I get that all <laughs> together? So. Uh -huh. In the Sermon on the Mount, mm -hmm. a different kind of context in Matthew than here. And this is just the right w ordered because we're kind of, I think you expressed a little, you know, well, this isn't, this, isn't this something the way this friend <laughs> is portrayed? But now yeah. we get Luke's yeah. bringing this together right here to give us an interpretation That's of right. the first story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you know? Luke is stringing these together deliberately. Yes. Mm -hmm. He knows what he's doing. He does. We're learning something here. Yeah. Shall we continue yeah. on? Yeah. Sure. John Brett? Okay. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks, if, asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, I mm. think that's an interesting <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. phrase, isn't it? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit <laughs> to those who ask him. <laughs> no. Matthew has something different, doesn't yes. he? Yes. Give good things. things. Good things. Get good yeah. things. But Luke, who's so invested in the spirit, he, mm -hmm. he puts the spirit. That's the yeah. that's the chief end. Yes. That's what that's the biggest thing you could get. Mm -hmm. And maybe right. that answers the problem. Go ahead. You were going to well, say Well, no, I feel just saying what you're saying. It uh, it shows us that this is not just a magic formula to get anything you want. I mean, I, I think that's Luke right. wants to make it clear. That this ask and you'll receive ask, believe, yeah. claim. doesn't mean um, everything on earth. that you're just going to get everything. I, I remember sitting with a, a man one time who was, his, his wife was a Christian, and she had asked me to come talk to him because she wanted him to become a Christian. And uh, it was clear from the beginning that he was not interested, but he had, had humored his wife, uh, being willing to uh, have me talk to him a little bit. But he ended the conversation by saying, um, listen, it says, ask and you'll receive. If prayer really works, then I want to see it work. Um, if you can go out and stand on my porch right now 
and pray that a new Cadillac will appear in my driveway. Oh, my I'll God. believe. Oh. But if you can't, oh then my. don't talk to me anymore. Oh my. Well, Luke wants to make it clear that when <laughs> Jesus is talking about prayer and asking and receiving, that is not what he's talking about. That's right. Exactly. And exactly. And that, this is an interpretation of the first part of the prayer. Mm -hmm. The whole story is an interpretation of that previous right. story about the friend. You the, begin with the kingdom. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then the second half n narrows it to something truly. And, and this is uh, remarkable because the very next story will be about Satan or Beelzebul. Mm -hmm. So now we'll have the contrast between the Holy Spirit, which God is very willing to give. We can have the gift of the Spirit in our lives. Mm -hmm. And then this other spirit, you know, Satan, you yeah. see. So now we're, we're getting a, a two-edged thing here. Ivan, you want to read those verses? Uh, 14 on? Uh-huh. Okay. Now he, Jesus was casting out a demon that was mute. In other words, I think the man was mute. Yes. And, uh, when the demon had gone out, <clears throat> the one who had been mute spoke, and the crowds were amazed. But some of them said, he casts out Jesus. This is a charge about Jesus. He casts out demons by Beelzebul, the ruler of the demons. Others, to test him, kept demanding from him a sign from heaven. And uh, am I getting a sign from yes, heaven? Yes, it is. It's uh, we'll 22 <laughs> seconds. We are we'll getting a sign. We'll continue on there next time. <laughs> Just remember, the humble shall see their God at work for them. No wonder they will be so glad. All who seek for God shall live in joy. Okay. That's in Psalms. All right. Very good.